On Wednesday, we heard about the 10 guiding principles, and Ashley spoke about the ninth one, which calls for a new type of unionism. This principle was reflecting on an era in the late 40s and early 50s when the labor movement at large was starting to push for these bigger demands, dental care, health care, pensions. Unions began looking at the bigger material needs of workers outside of the workplace. Building housing is actually an older labor tradition. New York garment workers established cooperatives as early as the teens and 20s, joined a couple decades later by the United Auto Workers, Steel Workers, and more. Some union halls even doubled as tenant union halls. Others on weekends were cooperative grocery stores. Zach likes to call it a culture of organizing. To me, in part, that means reimagining what our union halls can be. Vibrant hubs of worker self-activity and community organizing. When we agitate, we stir the pot. We take something that's standing still and we make it move. When we educate, we meet each other where we are at. We learn from each other's lived experiences and the collective memory of past struggles. When we organize, we identify the issues, we establish where we want to go, we develop a strategy, and then we move the pieces until we cross the goal line. All of us in this room took in a lot of information this week. We learned from our pensioners about the global struggle, organizing, and what it means to be a part of the international union movement. So what are we going to take home with us? What are we going to do with these connections and lessons and experiences? This youth movement is evolving. It's spreading from local to local, from union to union. Young workers are pushing and polling and finding new ways to participate. So what can we build together? What can we start in our locals back home? Let's keep organizing in our unions, our neighborhoods, and across oceans. Thank you.